Okay, here we go. We're going to make a quick little video. Say hi, Kat. Hi. Kat is a master pie maker, and she is going to, we're going to make a little video here on how she makes apple pies, which she's been doing for a long, long time, and through trial and error has come up with pretty much the perfect recipe. So right now she's peeling the apples. And she uses which apples, Kat? Two Granny Smith and two Fujis. And why do you use those apples? Because the Granny Smith cook down a little bit. They're a little softer apple. And the Fujis hold their shape. Okay. And the Grannies are kind of tart. Yeah, so that helps true. too. And you don't, you don't make... You don't make the the pie, the apples thin. You have big chunks. Chunky. Chunky. Okay, so we're going to take a little pause here. I'm not going to make you watch a 15-minute video. We're going to do this in just a few minutes. So right now she's peeling the apples, and then she'll add the um, spices to it, and we'll come back. Okay, so the apples are all chunked up. Chunky. Not okay. thin. Do not cut them thin. Okay. Chunky. Okay, so, and now you're going to put the seasonings in, which is? Which is three quarters of a cup of uh, sugar, a fourth of a cup of flour, uh, a half teaspoon of cinnamon, a half teaspoon of nutmeg, and a pinch of salt. Okay. And then this goes over the uh, okay. apples. And you just stir it all you together. Stir it all together and let it sit. While you're making the crust. Correct. Okay, and we'll come back. Okay, now she's going to make the crust. Um, and this is the best crust ever. Um, it's flour, shortening, butter, and salt, right? Yep. And I'll put on the video the, the measurements. She actually likes to make it the top crust and the bottom crust she's got over in this other pan. She likes to make them separate. So what's the key to this whole thing, Kat? Uh, you have to treat it like, uh, like a marriage. You have to treat the crust with care and love. It's all about love. Okay, don't overwork it, right? Right. Yeah, because if you work it too much, it activates the gluten in the flour, it makes it tough. and it makes it tough. So, and she also had the butter that was in there in little tiny cubes before she started. Yep. So you can see she works it together here, and then the other key is ice water. Ice water. She got some water there, filtered water with a little bit of ice. We've seen pie crust recipes where people roll the stuff in, put it in a fridge for an hour, come back. It's like ridiculous. So she mixes this up together but doesn't work it. It's just kind of a little crumbly thing there, see? It's like cornmeal. Cornmeal. Okay. okay. And now the water. And you want to go light on the water, right? Actually, no. No, okay. You, if you're going to err on the side of anything with crust, you want to add too much water. If you don't okay. have enough water, then your crust is going to fall apart. One teaspoon, no, two? No, it's a tablespoon. Oh, a tablespoon. I put three in. Three. With a fork? And then you just... this with a fork, like so, and then probably add another couple. So you can see that it's kind of starting to stick together a little bit already.
kind of form it into a ball. Mm-hmm. Still really crumbly, because if you work it too much and get it too smooth, then it's going to be tough. And this is really flaky crust because the butter and the shortening are spread out throughout it. So this is the the bottom crust. And I don't know if it'll come through on the video there, but you can actually see the little tiny bits of butter in the crust that are just kind of evenly distributed but aren't completely broken down. And that's what makes the crust flaky. And you roll it out until it's how thick, Cap? Uh, I roll it out pretty thin, actually. Okay. And then pick it up with the roller, and put it over the pan, and just kind of gently. Seat it down in there, right, so it doesn't tear. Right. We're just going to set that aside. Okay, and we'll come back in a minute. You're going to make the top one now? Yeah, so let me make that. Okay. Okay, so the apples are in. Um, and she takes the excess sugar and seasoning. Okay, and what you doing now? Um, I'm just putting a little dab of water on the edge of the help will help make adhere the the top crust. And then we're going to put a quarter of a cup of butter. into the apple pie. Okay. Okay, now you're just sealing it. Now you just run a knife around the edge of the pan, right? Correct. And then she does this like scallop edge thing. She'll come back in a minute when it's all done. Okay, so now the scalloped edge is all done. Why don't you hold it up here so we can see. Okay. 
Okay. Nice. Okay, now what? Uh, then you just put little vents, steam. That's for the steam to get out mm -hmm. when it cooks. You can put whatever pattern you want on there, right? Right. And what temperature do you cook this at? 425. For how long? About an hour. And you also put tin foil. This is crucial. Crucial. Uh, the tin foil around the edge keeps the rim of the crust from getting too done, right? Correct. And do you take that off before it's done? Or yeah. do you leave it on the whole time? No, I usually take it off a few minutes before it's ready to come out. Okay. Just to brown up the crust? Uh-huh, just to brown, but you don't want to... Yeah, you don't go buy, go, don't buy the stuff at the store that's like tin and you put on the pie. That doesn't work. It doesn't work. Okay. So this will go in the fridge. Right now we've got two pumpkin pies. It's the day before Thanksgiving. And we got two pumpkin pies in here cooking right now. And what we'll do is when the turkey comes out tomorrow, this pie will go in the oven. And it'll cook for about an hour, and then it'll be... It'll come out and it'll cool off for about half hour, 45 minutes, and then we'll serve warm pie after Thanksgiving dinner, right? <laughs> right. Anything else? That's it. Okay.